Gulliver's Troubles. Chapter 1. My name is Gulliver. As a young man in England, I studied to be a doctor to make my parents happy. But my dreams were to travel the seas. I was fascinated with navigation and mathematics because these subjects are useful for traveling. I always believed that someday I'd travel great distance and see the world. That day finally came in 1699. I was making very little money as a doctor and my family was poor. So I took a job aboard a great ship called the Antelope. As we sailed toward the, as we sailed toward the east, in in this late one night, I heard a loud crash. We had sailed into a great storm, and the ship flew into the air. I was thrown ov overboard and could see that the ship had hit a great rock. I couldn't see the rest of the ship's crew, so I believed that the, that. So I believe they were dead. I swam with the current of the great waves of the sea through the night until I fell is exhausted onto a sandy shore of unknown land. When I woke up, I realized I could not move. My first feeling was terror. I thought I was paralyzed. Suddenly, I heard faint, small voices all around me. The giant is awake! Hurry, secure the ropes! Everyone remain calm. We, we don't want to stir him. Where, where am I? What's happening? Don't worry about that now. You will find out soon enough. I finally realized the voices were coming from very, very small people, no bigger than my right thumb. They had tied me down with ropes so that could not move. Even my hair was nailed to the ground tightly. These men were very small, but they were they were also very clever and strong. At the moment, I realized how hungry I was. The last time I'd eaten was hours before the shipwreck. It was been many hours since my last meal, and I am very hungry. Can your people spare some food for the starving giant? You hardy, bring the leathers and the meat. Just then, I felt some small stick-like objects poking into my cheeks, and the small man climbed the tiny leathers to my mouth, dropping in, dropping in bits of meat. Each small piece of meat must have been an entire animal, but I couldn't tell from the taste what type of meat I was. After I had eaten many morsels of meat, se several small men climbed the ladders and large vessels of wine and took turns pouring in, pouring it into my mouth. Soon I felt satiated and very, very sleepy. Once again, I woke up from a deep sleep. This time, in an empty temple, I had no idea how I get to this place. Hello, is anyone there? I, the king of the land, am here. Who are you? I am Gulliver, a shipwrecked sailor from England. How did you get here, and what are your intentions? I simply drift with it. With the ties to your shores, I have no intentions except to stay peacefully with your people until I can continue on my journey. You may stay in our land as long as you promise to live by our laws and never act in violence against us. You have my word. You have my word. Tell me, O oh great king, what land is this? You have landed in Lilliput, it, and we are the Lilliputians. I have called upon over 600 men to protect a bed for you and to see to your needs. I have also arranged for six of my sorcerers to, 
teach you the laws and the customs of our land. And what shall I call you, great king? I am King Hugo, leader of the Lilliputians. You are very kind, King Hugo. How can I ever repay you? You only need to keep your promises and assist in protecting our land. You shall stay in this village until we determine that you may live. I am. I'm at your service, Your Majesty. The king then showed me to my quarters, where the Lilliputians had to. Had pulled hundred, hundreds of their own beds to protect a great bed for me.